this time. It took him 90 seconds to die. Seven months later, a police officer came forward. The boy was framed for the murder. Hmm? He didn't do it. You couldn't have known that. God tried to stop me from killing an innocent man and I ignored the sign. How can I even hope for forgiveness? I think sometimes it's easier to feel guilty than forgiven. Which means what? That maybe your guilt over these deaths has become your reason for living. Maybe you need a new reason to go on. I, I, I don't want to go on. Can't you see? I'm old. I have cancer. I've had enough. The only thing that is holding me back is that I am afraid. I'm afraid of what comes next. What do you think that is? Oh, you tell me. Is atonement even possible? What does God want from me? I think it's up to each one of us to interpret what God wants. So people can do anything? They can rape, they can murder, they can steal all in the name of God and it's okay? No, that's not what I'm saying. Well, what are you saying? Because all I'm hearing is some new age, God is love, one size fits all crap. Hey, Dr. Truman. No, I don't have time for this now. Greg, it's okay. Look, I understand. No, you don't understand. You don't understand. How could you possibly say that? Now you listen to me. I want a real chaplain who believes in a real God and a real hell. I hear that you're frustrated, but you need to ask yourself... No, I don't need to ask myself. I need answers. And all your questions and your uncertainty are only making things worse. I know you're upset. God, I need someone who will look me in the eye and tell me how to find forgiveness because I am running out of time. I'm trying to help. Well, don't! Just get out! Get out! Get out! <laughs> This clip is a tribute to the writers of Ya because it's true to real life. The word conscience means with knowledge. And here we have a man who has seriously violated his conscience and he's overcome by guilt. Listen to his words. I am afraid, I'm afraid of what comes next. True guilt always produces a fear of punishment and so it should. Any guilty criminal should have a fear that one day he'll have to face the law that he's violated. When that so-called minister said, I think it's up to every one of us to interpret what God wants, listen to the man's reasoning. So people can do anything? They can rape, they can murder, they can steal all the name of God and it's okay? This is common sense. Think about it for a moment. What would you think of a judge who turned a blind eye to murder? He knew who killed somebody, but he deliberately looked the other way. If a judge did that, he's not a good judge. He's corrupt and should be brought to justice himself. In the United States, between 1990 and the year 2000, there were 100,000 unsolved murders. 100,000 people were murdered, and the murderers got away scot-free. If God isn't going to bring those murderers to justice, then he's not good. He's corrupt. So it made sense to this man that if God is good, there must be a place of punishment for murderers. Listen to his conclusion. Now you listen to me. I want a real chaplain who believes in a real God and a real hell. Logic told him that if God is good, something we all know intuitively, murderers will be punished. They will go to a place called hell. That was what was making him justifiably fearful. The Bible teaches that God is so good, he'll not only punish murderers, but he'll also punish rapists, adulterers, thieves, fornicators, and liars. And his judgment won't stop there. He'll punish those who wanted to kill, that is, they had hatred in their hearts, and those who desired to commit adultery. Listen to the words of Jesus. He said, Whoever looks upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. God is holy. He sees our thought life. 
and from the point of view of absolute holiness. That leaves this man and all of us in big trouble. Listen to him. I need answers, and all your questions and your uncertainty are only making things worse. I know you're upset. God, I need someone who will look me in the eye and tell me how to find forgiveness because I am running out of time. We are all running out of time. Every day, 150,000 people die. They pass into eternity, and if they die in their sins, they'll end up getting exactly what they deserve, eternal justice. And that's a frightening thought. The Bible warns it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So what should we do? How can we get right with God? That was his question. Is atonement even possible? What does God want from me? In asking, is atonement possible? He was asking if there was any way he could be made right with God. Atonement is what happens when the law is satisfied. Let me explain. If a judge finds you $100,000, you're in debt to the law by that amount. But if someone steps in and pays your fine, they have made atonement for you. Their payment has made you right with the law. That means your case can be dismissed. You're free to go. Now think about it. You and I have violated God's law. You have lied in your life, haven't you? Or stolen something that belongs to another person. If you've looked with lust and you've committed adultery in your heart, have you ever used God's name in vain? If you've broken those commandments, God sees you as a lying, thieving, blasphemous adulterate heart and you'll be found guilty on the day of judgment. And the Bible warns that all liars will end up in the lake of fire. No thief, no adulterer, no fornicator, no blasphemer will enter heaven. God takes sin very seriously. But the scriptures say that he's rich in mercy. And 2,000 years ago, God stepped in and paid the fine for us. He became a human being in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. And this morally perfect man gave his life as a sacrifice for the sin of the world. He provided atonement for us. We broke God's law, the Ten Commandments, and Jesus paid our fine in His life's blood. You know the verse. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Then Jesus rose from the dead and defeated death. Now you and I can receive forgiveness of sins. We can escape the damnation of hell. God can dismiss our case. He can commute our death sentence and legally grant us everlasting life because of the atonement of the cross. Another word for atonement is justification. No other religion can justify us or make us right with God. The moment we repent and trust Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are declared just in God's sight, as though we'd never sinned in the first place. Listen to Acts chapter 13 in the Bible. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man, that is Jesus Christ, is preached to you the forgiveness of sins, and by him everyone who believes is justified from all things which you cannot be justified by the law of Moses. So what are you waiting for? God offers you everlasting life. Your time is running out. You may not be alive tomorrow, so today repent and trust in Jesus Christ. Humble yourself and apologize to God for sinning against him. Think about your sins. Think about the Savior. Think about what He did for you, and then trust in Jesus as you would trust a parachute to save you. Then pick up a Bible and obey what you read. Thanks for listening to me. Please feel free to go to livingwaters.com and click on Save Yourself Some Pain. There you'll find principles for Christian growth. May God bless you and keep you.